my god. That's huge. It's so cool. <laughs> oh. So I close my eyes and then... Come on, right. Right. Come on up. Okay. Or a little bit. Good lord. <laughs> Good lord, what? <laughs> Isn't that's that insane? That's awesome, isn't it? Holy sh! This is brilliant. What? Dude, I might have to get myself one of these. What's up and welcome to another episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. Today we're taking a look at the most insane monitor from Samsung. This is the 49 inch QLED ultra wide. This is a 32 by 9 aspect ratio. This is my workspace when I'm editing videos. Unless I'm on the go, I'm using my Razer laptop. Now there's a lot of pros for this monitor, but there's also a lot of cons. This monitor is not going to be for everyone. So without further ado, let's hop right into it. At 3840 by 1080, or exactly half of a 4K monitor split horizontally, this monitor is very high resolution, and it will take a very powerful PC to take advantage of the 144 hertz refresh rate. I'm running this monitor on a water-cooled i7 7700K at five gigahertz with two water-cooled 1080 Ti's and SLI. And even then, I'm not getting consistent 144 FPS in many modern titles. Despite the ultra high resolution, this monitor is huge at 49 inches, and because you're gonna be sitting so close to it, it's actually easier to see the individual pixels than you would expect. This monitor has vibrant, rich colors and accurate ones too. The monitor came from the factory with a color calibration stats sheet. Now it is a matte screen, which is good for helping prevent screen glare, but ultra bright reflections from windows can still cause minor glare on the screen. I had to buy blackout curtains to have an optimal viewing experience. This monitor is being advertised as a gaming monitor, but it's also incredible for productivity tasks since it's essentially two 1080p monitors seamlessly integrated into one. Video editing, working with documents, browsing the web while watching a movie, and multitasking in general are all fantastic. This is definitely my favorite monitor to edit videos on since I can access all the tools I need without having to switch between tabs and dig through menus, saving me time. It has extremely good response time at one millisecond. Its insane field of view is absolutely incredible. The level of immersion you feel is unlike anything I've tried before. The only thing I'd say is more immersive is using a VR headset. This monitor shines with first person shooters, but it's not just for the FPS games. There's many genres that benefit from this style of ultra wide monitor. It's also great for strategy, racing, MMO, and many other games where peripheral vision is preferred over vertical vision. The extra wide aspect ratio takes advantage of the naturally wide aspect ratio of our eyesight. The key feature here is that it allows you to identify movement in your peripheral vision that would normally be invisible simply because it would normally be off screen. One major downside is that this monitor is so wide that it reduces vertical viewing angles that you you would normally see. For some games, this isn't such a big deal, but even for first person shooters, sometimes you wish you could see more vertically, such as when you're going upstairs or needing to battle someone up on a building or flying through the sky. MOBAs in particular rely on being able to see what's around you. Whether or not this is a big deal to you will depend on what games you play and how the game handles the additional resolution. Sometimes the games simply add additional viewing, on the right and left sides, giving you more standard vision. This is the best type of games for this monitor, but in other titles, it just chops the existing vision into a narrower slit, reducing the top and bottom vision that the player sees. Another issue to keep in mind is that some games aren't ready for this wide of an aspect ratio. This monitor is the first 32 by nine aspect ratio out there, so you need to be prepared for fiddling with settings of games to get them working correctly. Most games work fine out of the box, but older games and less popular titles do suffer from the odd aspect ratio, causing funky menus and black bars on the sides. These aren't deal breakers, but more just annoyances that you have to keep in mind. The good news is that when this does happen, you can usually just use a traditional resolution like 1920 by 1080 and end up with black boxes on either side with the game in the center of the monitor, such as when I tried playing Cuphead. Another downside is that this monitor only comes with the FreeSync option. I do hope Samsung releases a version with the G-Sync option in the future. If you have an Nvidia card like me, you'll have to deal with some screen tearing, especially when you're running games at less than 144 frames per second. Then there's also the question of whether or not you can play games without getting motion sick. The immersion is incredible, but this screen is huge and 
after a long gaming session on this monitor, I initially felt a little dizzy. I found that it helped if I sat an extra 6 to 12 inches further back. For first person shooters such as PUBG, Overwatch, and Call of Duty, I think this monitor is absolutely incredible. 90% of the time I would much rather see peripheral vision than vertical vision. Right now the monitor is on sale for $950 on Amazon, which I think is a great price for something this incredible. I personally paid $1250 when I bought it two months ago. If you think that price tag is a bit much, but you still want an excellent gaming monitor, I'll post a couple of good alternatives in the video description down below. Overall, I definitely recommend this monitor. At the current price of $949, I think it's a steal just as long as you have the space to use it, don't mind the lack of G-Sync support, and you have the performance hardware to push out enough pixels in the games you want to play. I don't think it's absolutely perfect, but I think it's currently my favorite monitor on the gaming market. If you're on the fence, I'd say give it a try, see if you like it, if you don't, you can simply return it. But if you're like me, you'll fall in love with the immersion and the incredible feel. That's it for this episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. We'll see you next time. Brandon, out.